Hey everyone, it's Imran from Options Insight, your macro options daily. Okay, US markets absolutely ripped higher into month end uh, as Powell gave investors some confidence that rate hikes were slowing down. Shock horror, didn't we already know that? I thought we did. I thought that was quite well priced in already, but the market seemed to lo love the fact that it came out of his mouth uh, as those words. Uh, China also had another strong day. It does seem like COVID restrictions are gradually being lifted and they are watering down a lot of the language in the press, in the state sponsored press about COVID. Um, so it does feel like we're heading in that direction, right? And and it's not as if G is going to come out with an announcement. Yeah, sorry, this policy was rubbish. We're stopping it. He's, they're going to do things to save face. They're going to show little bits of evidence that suggest, oh, look, look, it's because of the way we've managed it. It's not so bad. And now we can come out of this. But clearly the public outcry that uh, and, and the civil unrest that kicked off is something that they don't want to continue. And so they are starting to relax things. And that's why the Chinese market, again, another 5% rally in FXI. Um, <clears throat> so that's up 10% on the week now. Um, and is really starting to show some signs of bullishness. Um, now, it's already had a good run from the lows. So it doesn't mean it's just going to go directly up from here. But if you're looking forward into March to June next year, then this thing has still got a lot of value if you look at it from a valuation perspective compared to other markets. So something to be aware of. Uh, we are still long Hong Kong calls. Uh, not doing. We did roll them to March. Kind of happy to sit on those for a little while. Um, commodities were also firmer. Um, weaker dollar, lower real yields, helping those. Uh, Nat gas pulled back a bit. Uh, that kind of ran out of steam, down about 10% on the week, 4% uh, yesterday. Obviously, that had been gapping higher on, on worries around the colder weather and things like that. But that's pulled back a bit. Uh, but all the other commod commodities flying, uh, probably the biggest one, um, silver up two and a half standard deviations on the day with a four and a half percent rally. So that was pretty impressive. Um, volatility in general got hit across the board. Now, you did see vols come down initially on that knee jerk higher on Powell. But then as the move accelerated, especially in the US indices, and they turned into like three and a half, oh, sorry, three percent move on S&P, four and a half move on NASDAQ which are like two to three sigma moves on the day, uh, that was when vols stopped collapsing and kind of stabilized and found a bit of a bid. Uh, commodity vols in general were softer, especially in nat gas down another five vols. That's that's making the nat gas vol move down 18 and a half points on the week. So finally, nat gas getting the memo that we've been banging on about for about the last week or two, saying that these vols are just not sustainable in nat gas. Uh, and that is down about 20 vols on the week. So our positions have come good there. Uh, and we're on side on the on some of the strangles that we've got on. Um, if we flag, uh, sorry, if we look at the carry side of things, I had flagged that I didn't think that sea of green was going to persist for very long. It was a bit flattered by Thanksgiving. I didn't realize it was going to flip quite so fast. But if you look at what happened in US indices, it carries back to negative on NASDAQ and S&P. And that was because of those massive moves that we saw yesterday. Um, there are still some pockets of green, like these European indices can't really seem to move much. Um, they don't sell off much when the S&P does, and they don't rally much when the S&P does. They're just kind of muted and kind of stuck near the highs of the range right now uh, in these European indices. Um, I do think the momentum's getting exhausted on the upside. So if anything, I think the next big move in European indices is probably lower than it is higher. Um, and the fact that they couldn't participate in the squeeze yesterday in any meaningful way uh, kind of suggests that I may be right on that call. Um, and then uh, we also see pockets of carry in the uh, energy commodities. I've already said nat gas, but even oil really struggling to realize. Uh, it's realizing in the 30s and it's still implied in the 40s. So still some juice to be harvested if you're looking for it in those energy commodities. Uh, skew wise, um, we did see S&P skew get whacked. Uh, clearly a scramble for upside there, people willing to sell puts and buy calls. So that takes that back into the 1.3 percentile. So kind of the cheapest skew out of all of the major indices there, all except for China, which has got practically no skew because obviously people are now less fearful of the downside in China and starting to play the upside and look look for ways to get um, exposure to, to a re-rating in, in Chinese equities if we do get a reopening. Uh, oil skew also getting hit. Um, we saw some positive inventory data um, come out and we have got this OPEC meeting next week. Um, and in general, we're, we're just seeing that, you know, if you look at the SPR reserves, you know, these guys are draining reserves in the SPR and then exporting the oil to the rest of the world. So 
whatever the US government is doing, it seems a bit nuts right now. And I think it's only a matter of time before they reverse course and start to th- at least stop draining the SPR and then think about replenishing it. So I do think these things will will come back to play in the oil market. Um, I've bought a bit of time, as you guys know what I've been doing um, in my oil trades, uh, but, but still relatively optimistic about that trade for next year. Um, okay, if we move on, um, so Powell obviously brought some relief to markets. Um, yesterday's speech, obviously uh, the message that we were thinking we're going to get a more hawkish message because financial conditions, obviously, they, they need to keep them tight to tame inflation. And as markets rally through the wealth effect, you generally um, would get the opposite, right? Financial conditions loosening as people feel wealthier, and then that spurs on more inflation. So, so we thought we'd get um, Powell talking it down and talking the market down. But whatever he said, I mean, I didn't think he said anything too dovish, to be honest, but the market took it very dovishly. And, and what I think, really, you've got to You've got to see the market reaction um, to really get a gauge for how positioning really was. So I think like a lot of us tactical players in the market, we were all expecting him to talk hawkish, given that he's one of the most hawkish members of the committee and he happens to be the chairman. Um, People, fast money would have positioned for that and got itself a bit short, expecting that to be a negative catalyst. And then when he wasn't really anywhere near as hawkish as the market had wanted, and he kind of confirmed that 50 bips is pretty much what's going to happen. And if you look at the pricing, 50 bips was priced. 80% probability has pretty much been where we've been for the last week. So it wasn't a massive repricing in expectations for 50 bips on the FOMC meeting, yet the market clearly in equities was positioned more short to in the, in the hope that this probability was going to flip more towards 75 and be more even. And the fact that it didn't do that led to an unwinding of some shorts and led to a big old short squeeze. And you go, you, and, that, and the reason we, we can be confident that it was a short squeeze is because it's the most hated sectors like the ARK ETF that squeezed the most. So that was up nearly 8% on the day, um, and it was really ripping hard. Um, if we look at the kind of your, your euro dollar strip, um, terminal rates have been priced down a bit. Um, so they're sub 5% now, terminal rates uh, on the week. That's the kind of changes that we're seeing there. So the whole curve kind of pricing some sort of 15 odd 20 bits out of the uh, hikes out of the kind of rate hike path um, over the last week. So that's kind of where the market has kind of taken some relief from. Um, Now, there's no doubt that the zero uh, data expiry options flow probably helped extend the move because as as we've been kind of saying recently, um, because of these major data points having such a big impact on markets, People are just flying in on the day, waiting for the data point to hit, and then just piling into one-day options um, to, to, to express their intraday views, right? Because they're getting cheap, really you know, high-octane leverage to that view. Once they get that data point, they expect the market to go a certain way. And, and it's almost like it almost becomes self-fulfilling because they pile into a load of zero DTE options. And then the dealers who are on the other side of that have to hedge that and then it kind of pushes things that way for a little while, at least into the end of that session. So that's kind of what we've been seeing. Um, Now, on that point, I'll I'll bring up some charts that, um, so Brent from Spot Gamma, our friends over there, kind of show that you you did have a lot of call flow uh, between the 4,000 and the 4050 area uh, on the zero DTE. So kind of like 50 50 odd percent of the volume that traded in S&P options was all in that one day stuff. Um, so when that happens and you get that initial move higher, what you often then get is the, the volatility has a knee jerk lower. So you can see the fixed strike volatility for one month options on S&P did drop. So it was around 19.6. It dropped by nearly a vol point on the initial move higher. Right. So you've got the S&P move from 38.50 to around 40 well, for just above 4000 and the volatility dropped because the market was thinking, OK, you know, if we stick at 4,000 now, we've had our move, Vol can get crushed and the market doesn't need to move. When the market then started to go through 4025, that was when the volatility recovered again. And you saw the implied Vol on that particular option that was the end of December 4080 strike, which ended up being the at the money option. That Vol recovered all the way and was back to exactly where it was before we even got the rally, right? So you can actually see that Vol didn't go down. So even though the VIX went down, because the VIX is the floating level of at the money vol, that's what it's linked to. The VIX went down on the day, 
and it got itself, you know, down decently on the day, the actual fixed strike volatility of these options didn't do much because what happens is when the dealers are all short these one day options, they scramble to buy whatever they can buy because they can't buy the one day options because that's the stuff that they're short and there's just no, there's no offer on those. So then what they buy is the stuff they can get their whole, their hands on, which has actually gone down in volatility terms. And that's why they buy these one month things that also contain gamma and allow them to hedge their exposure. So that's why you see those vols go back up. And, and the way you see, observe it, if you look at the VIX is just that we got that move higher in the S and P from 4020 to 4080 and the VIX just couldn't really go down. So whereas the VIX did initially go down, it then kind of stopped going down even though the S&P went higher. And that's this phenomenon where that vol is forced back up um, from a fixed strike perspective because dealers need to get some vol on the books because the gamma is becoming too painful of these one day options and they just need to protect um, that scenario of the market just continuing to go higher. Now, towards the end of the day, you do tend to get sellers of these one-day options coming back to monetize, and that kind of relieves some of the pressure. And again, today, you know, if we didn't have PCE and non-farms at the end of this week, then maybe the vols would be collapsing back down pretty quick, and we would see the VIX take another vol point hit. But I just think they're probably going to wait for that data and see how the market digests non-farms before they really let the VIX come down anymore. Okay, uh, and then the last thing in today's note is um, what's going on in precious metals. Um, so metals have had a, had a good run in November. They had a big squeeze yesterday. Like I said, silver up four and a half percent. It's all about real yields and the dollar. Clearly, the dollar's on its knees right now. It's had a decent pullback, but it's at a strong support at around one hundred four and a half, one hundred five. That's quite a big level. Uh, you've had real yields pull back by about fifty five basis points. Um, so real yields got as high as one hundred eighty in the US. Uh, they've pulled back to around 125. So that tends to be good for the likes of silver and gold, uh, especially gold. But we're reaching some big resistances now where we're just hovering um, below the 200-day moving average in gold around this 18, 1810 area. Um, so we kind of think that that this has probably had its run in the short term. You know, Powell's explicitly said that they want real yields uh, in restricted territory. So I don't think they're going to really want to see real yields fall below 1%. Um, so we're, they're going to probably respond to a move in real yield. So I think that's going to kind of cap the upside in gold in the short term. How would I play it? Uh, well, we've been looking at GDX. GDX had a really good run. This is our vol dashboard here. GDX had a good run. It's up 35% from its lows. Um, so a pretty impressive rally it's had. Uh, we're looking at it. We're thinking buying put spreads is probably the trade here. Um not really comfortable selling calls. It has reached an uh, interesting resistance point, uh, old supports from uh, from last year, uh, and also the 200-day moving average coming in around where it is now, around 29, 29 and a half. So we kind of think buying put spreads right now in GDX is the way to do it. If you do think um, that you're going to see some react, you're either going to see a higher inflation print, you're going to see real yields move back up a bit, um, and that's not going to be great for gold. And then if it's not great for gold, then this is a higher beta version of gold. The GDX, it tends to move, you know, two to three times as much as gold. So then we could easily get a pullback in the order of magnitude of kind of five to 10 percent on this thing. So we're looking at. All right. That's that's it for today's um, video. Hope you found that one useful. Uh, look out for our what all the new stuff we're doing. Uh, we're launching a joint product with 42 Macro, uh, which is our options overlay on 42 Macro. It's going to be a good one. Me and Darius have got a lot to talk about. Those of you who've seen videos with both of us before, um, yeah, look out for that product because it's, it's, uh, we're pretty excited about launching it. All right, thanks a lot and see you tomorrow.